Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. This is my 11th video, so I thought it would be a good time to bring new viewers up to speed. What we're doing here is Test Driven Development uh, from scratch, and if you start with video number one, you'll see me start with a blank screen. The project that we're working on is a financial projection tool. It's a tool for uh, tracking finances into retirement and projecting whether or not you'll have enough money in retirement. This is a tool, a real tool, to replace something that I've been using for my own personal finances um, that I have in a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet has gotten bigger and more complicated over time and I'm starting to worry about errors in it and it's also quite slow. So this, uh, this is a real program that's actually going to try to replace that spreadsheet. Um, and it's a nice tool for, for doing this test-driven development series. So where we're at is we have this idea of a savings account year, which is actually poorly named. It's really a stock market year. And what that is is um, it represents one year of funds in the stock market. And uh, so it has a starting balance, starting principle, and then an ending balance, and ending principle, and you can withdraw money th from it uh, during the year. Now, because this is for long-term projections, we're going to be tracking lots of years. It's not super detailed. It is just, um, just enough to do some projections. So you're not going to see me tracking individual dates during the year. Now, when we left off, we had some basic stuff where we had starting balance, starting principal, interest rate, withdrawals, and capital gains tax, which is actually the, the hardest problem here. Um, and when I left off, uh, it wasn't working. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. We expected 9,533, but it was 9,866. Um, but one thing I realized as I was working on this is that I don't really care about the ending capital gains. I'm not sure why I started writing code around that. Uh, it does concern me a little bit that the code doesn't work, but uh, I actually don't care that much about this value. Uh, ending capital gains should be ending balance minus ending principal. So if this works, um, so this is just a different way of solving the same problem. And that works. So I don't know what was wrong with what I was doing before, but she, the other thing is, is I don't think I care about ending capital gains. I need to know the ending principle, um, but not the ending capital gains. So I'm going to take that out. So, um, And in general, I'm not very happy with the way these tests are written. Uh, they're just, I'm finding it very hard to tell what's going on. This code is actually not that complicated, and yet I'm finding it extremely difficult to keep track. Um, part of that is because narrating a video and typing and trying to actually think all at the same time is, is pretty hard and uh, I don't have as much brain power available as I would if I was just doing this by myself. But I think that's more than that. I think that it's just uh, the tests are, are too complicated. So I'm going to try to simplify them uh, in the next few minutes. But first, I think I can get rid of this. I don't need it, I don't think. No, I don't need it. So. Let's go through and um, let's, let's finish up this class. There's only one thing left to do that I know of that's actually a feature. Um, and that is we have to make sure that next year is being done properly. So next year's starting balance equals this year's ending balance. And um, next year's interest rate equals this year's interest rate. And then, of course, next year's starting principal equals this year's ending principal. If we do that, I think we've done everything we need to do.
Okay, I expected 10,000 for the starting principal. Um, oh, wait a second, what's that? Expected 10,000 was zero. I guess uh, we're using new account, which has 10,000 as the starting principal. So if I go to next year, I should just be able to say this dot ending principal. Yeah, and that works. So let's go ahead and make this really explicit. Um, I like using methods as opposed to instance variables so that if I take out the instance variable, everything still works. Okay. Now I think we've coded everything that we really need to code. Everything else is about cleanup, and um, let's go ahead and do that. We need to get rid of the savings account year initializers. We had these in here because we had a constructor that didn't set these values. Now we don't have that constructor, so I'm going to make it more obvious. Um, except for total withdrawals. Now that will default to zero, but um, putting it in here because I just want you to be able to look at the constructor and see everything that's going on. Okay, let's clean up these tests. It's just, there's too much going on here. Um, so I'm going to consolidate. For example, um, I think we can say that we want the starting balance to equal that. The starting principle. Um, now I've already gotten some comments. I've only published the fourth video at the time I'm recording this, but I've already gotten some comments asking about um, multiple assertions per test. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, there's a certain school of thought out there which is um, very dogmatic about how you have to write your test. They'll say you're only allowed to have one assertion per test. They'll say you have to write them in a particular order, like you have to write the assertion first. You know what? None of that matters. What matters is communicating your intentions clearly and covering what you need to cover. And you don't need to cover all the code. You need to cover the things that you could possibly make a mistake on, which, um, as you've seen from me, is everything, or almost everything. But uh, all that other stuff is technique. It's a means to an end, and it's more important to keep the end in mind. So I think that combining these... Uh, these tests into a single method is going to make the code more clear. And the reason for that is that um, if I have to scroll up and down to see what's going on, I have trouble following what's going on. So I'm just going to call this next year. Um, and I think that somebody reading this will be able to see that this is about what happens next year. And uh, they'll also be able to see that... Um, each of these is starting balance, starting principal interest. If I'm wrong, of course, I'll take it back out. But I don't think uh, I don't think I am. Let's factor that out. Okay. One thing we really need to fix is the fact that we're passing in this capital gains tax rate everywhere. Okay. Um, that's that. Let's also take care of our starting values. So we have our starting balance. Starting principal. Uh, sometimes I won't even test this stuff because it is just a simple assignment in the constructor. Um, but since it's in there, I could have said defaults to zero, but if this fails, it will say total withdrawn default expected zero was whatever. So when I do an assert equals, I think about how it's going to read in the failure.
Okay. Now we're starting to, I think, you know, honestly, when I first started doing test-driven development, I got really excited about how many tests I had. It was sort of a badge of honor to have a thousand tests, fifteen hundred tests. Um, and I have a sneaking suspicion that part of the urge to have one just assertion, just one assertion per test, is to bulk up the number of tests. Um, maybe that's maybe that's petty of me, but uh, that's just my guess. Uh, is that there's a little bit of that going on. Okay, so we have uh, starting capital gains is starting balance minus starting principal. Do I even care about starting capital gains? I don't know why I would. Nope. Nobody is using it here. Which and I don't think it's that interesting to report, so I'm going to take that out. There we go. Okay, ending principal considers withdrawals. So um, ending principal never goes below zero. So I want to cover this stuff, but consolidate the tests, uh, make them a lot easier to understand and read, and put you know get rid of some of the cruft that's uh, sort of collected here. Again, I like to tell a story. So what's the story I want to tell? How can I make this uh, straightforward? Well, let's talk about ending principle. Yeah, let's just talk about ending principle. So if we withdraw 1,000, um, we can say principal considers withdrawals. There we go. And our ending principal should be 2,000 after withdrawing 1,000. We can withdraw another 500 and assert that ending principal um, totals multiple withdrawals. Uh, like that. And we can withdraw uh, 3,000 and assert that ending principle uh, never goes below zero. Now let's look at interest earned. Interest earned. Um, by the way, one of the things I'm trying to do here is use the same constructor in every case so I can factor that out. So. Interest earned is starting balance uh, basic interest earned. I guess we'll call this. We expect it to be a thousand because we had a ten thousand starting balance. Now let's say that it uh, doesn't include withdrawals. Uh, withdrawals don't earn interest. Okay, and um, I'm going to say something about capital gains tax too, but I see that I'm coming to the end of my time here. So that's it for this video. We will pick up again next time. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.